Today on BCPOV, I'm going to review 10 mountain bike products that I've used myself over the past years. Although some of them were given to me, I've purchased most of them myself. I'll let you know which ones were provided to me as we go through. You'll also notice that many of these items are very well used, and as such, these are going to be long-term reviews. Many of them would make great gifts for that special cyclist in your life. First off, we have probably the most unknown product on our list. In fact, I'd never seen this product until a visit to a bike shop in Japan. Have you ever had issues aligning your brake caliper to your rotor resulting in this rubbing sound? Well, I have too, and it can be really tricky to get that perfect alignment. Enter the Burzman Clam Brake Gap Tool. This product will help you align your caliper to your rotor. First, loosen the bolts on your brake caliper. Then slide the tool onto the rotor and shimmy it up between the brake pads and the rotor. Once in place, squeeze the brake lever and tighten the bolts on your caliper. Then rotate the wheel to remove the tool. You should now have a perfectly aligned brake caliper and that rub should now be silent. This may be one of my favorite tools in my toolbox and at $7 for three of these, it's hard to go wrong. The only slight hang up is that they may distort on some rotors but I guess that's why they include three. Next up, we have a hydration pack from a Swedish company called Usui. Their claim to fame is their no dancing monkey technology, as in the pack won't bounce around on your back. To accomplish this, they use a unique harness system to strap the pack securely to your body. As you can see, there's very little bounce compared to a traditional hydration pack. The packs are adjustable for different body sizes using these velcro straps. Looking for simplicity, I purchased this vertical for last February. The pack has a 4 liter volume and a 2 liter water bladder. The internals are pretty basic with a pouch that might just fit your phone. I've been using variations of these packs since 2015, including the more featured Airborne 3 and the Airborne 9, which U-Suite kindly gave me earlier this year. I'll start using these when the Vertical 4 gives up the ghost. But the lack of Dancing Monkey does come with a few trade-offs. For one, it does need to be strapped fairly tight, leading to this kind of thing. And on the same token, the pack may not be a great choice for some women. As you may know, I switched to flat pedals and shoes recently, but before that I rode clipless for many years and my most recent shoe was the Gyro Teradoro, an all-mountain shoe. For me, one of the most important features of a shoe is durability, and the Teradoro has this in spades. The Vibram sole has no signs of peeling off, one of the most common failure points in mountain bike shoes. Spending long days on the bike, often with hike bikes they've been very comfortable. I have fairly narrow feet though, and with thin socks, sometimes the buckle can max out and I'm unable to tighten it enough. Additionally, the location of the buckle is not optimal and trail side impacts can cause the buckle to release, loosening the shoe. But overall, I'm happy with the quality of the shoe and I would buy another pair if need be. On last week's bike check video, I featured this next product, the Bike Yoke Revive, saying it was one of the most reliable bike parts I've ever owned. I bought this dropper post in mid-2017, and in the last two and a half years I've owned it, I've had zero problems and it's been serviced zero times. For a dropper post, especially one of this length, this is pretty amazing. My previous posts, including the Case Lev and RockShox Reverb, lasted just a handful of months before a warranty or service was required. But part of the reason this post is so good is due to its revive feature. One of the most common issues for dropper posts is air mixing with the oil causing a spongy post. Well the revive feature anticipates this and can bleed the air out of the oil. Just hold down the reset valve, push the post down and it's back to normal. But reliability does come at a price, $450 in this case. The next product is unique as it's something that many of us don't think about, chain oil. My wife and I have been using WPL wet and dry lube since last summer. And well, I didn't know chain oil could be so good. 
In fact, even in the nastiest conditions, my drivetrain still felt smooth as butter. I used it racing TransBC last summer on some very wet days, and I couldn't believe how smooth my drivetrain felt. On top of that, it's environmentally friendly, made in Canada, and reasonably priced at $10 a bottle. The only downside I noticed is that it can leave a buildup of black goop on the chain and sprockets. The next product is for those suspension geeks out there. The Quark Shockwiz. Basically a device that records the air pressure in your fork or shock. It interprets that data and gives recommendations on how to set up your suspension. Attach the device to your fork or shock and fire up the app on your phone. Follow the calibration process and go for a ride. By the end of the ride, it will give you shock tune score, some suggestions, along with a confidence score. Apply one suggestion, starting with the first, and go for another ride. Repeat this process a few times, and eventually your suspension will be set up properly. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, it does get a bit tedious as you have to recalibrate every time you change the air pressure. You also need to go on longer rides on a variety of terrain to get accurate suggestions. Additionally, the suggestions in the app can be confusing. Does this mean add more air? Or is the goal to center the slider, in which case removing air is the suggestion? In spite of these issues, it does seem to do a reasonably good job of setting up your suspension, even if it takes a while. Mine was given to me by Quark, but if you have $330 to spare and have a desire to demystify your suspension, this might be the right product for you. I have a love-hate relationship with cycling GPSs. I often find them to be more trouble than they're worth, but with a desire to get halfway decent ride analytics in my race videos, I decided I needed one. Pushed away from the Garmin Edge 520 due to its frustrating user interface, I decided on the Wahoo Element Bolt, which was given to me by the company itself. And thankfully, the Wahoo was largely frustration-free. The interface is easily customizable from the app, allowing you to reorder and add data points in real time. If you don't have a network connection when you finish your ride, it's saved in the app and uploaded when a connection becomes available without needing to reconnect to the Wahoo. The Garmin did not do this, by the way. Additionally, the Wahoo doesn't turn itself on when charging, unlike the Garmin. Coming from a background of designing video games, it's these small little details that are important to me, and the Wahoo is just better in this regard. But the Element Bolt isn't perfect. The build quality isn't as sturdy as the Garmin. This flap came undone, requiring a super glue repair. Despite this, it seemed to remain waterproof on some pretty appalling rides. Another annoyance is that this device did not come with this tether, something that I think is mandatory for mountain biking. I had to purchase it separately for $10. And finally, the device seemed to consistently shortchange me on elevation by about 20%. Luckily, the elevation can be corrected on Strava, but of course, this adds a layer of annoyance. Overall, I preferred the Wahoo Element over my Garmin Edge 520, but it certainly isn't perfect. This next product pairs nicely with the dropper post mentioned earlier in the video, the 9.8 digit remote. Featuring a cartridge bearing, this lever is extremely smooth to actuate. It also has a failure point designed within it. If you manage to smash it, this plastic axle will break, saving your lever from further damage. Buy the replacement part for $5 and you're back in business. But my favorite feature might be that the cable clamps at the lever, instead of at the post. Just run the cable end at the dropper post. My only complaint would be that the axle might break just a little too early. 9.8 collaborated with Wolf Tooth components to create this lever, and as such, Wolf Tooth has a very similar model with the same features available. For this next product, I was actually surprised to find out I've owned them for three and a half years the Race Face Ambush Knee Pads. Having used them on virtually every ride since then, I'm shocked at their good condition. My original motivation for purchasing them was to avoid having to take my shoes on and off to put them on. And well, these do that with the help of some Velcro straps. Once they're strapped on, they're good to go and they stay in place while riding. They seem to have done a good job of protecting me as I've crashed on them many times without so much as a scratch. They do sometimes move on impact, but really, what knee pad wouldn't? 
As for negatives, well, I guess they're kind of warm when climbing, but what do you expect? The last product on our list is even older than the previous product. I've owned these Endura MT500 spray shorts for over six years and somehow they're still in one piece. You may have noticed the word spray in the name and that's because the back panels have been waterproofed to protect your butt from water spraying up from the rear tire. And as you know, it rains a lot in the Pacific Northwest, so this is a real game changer. They've got ventilation on both legs, or the bottoms can be cinched down to reduce airflow or water spraying up. And did I mention, these shorts are six years old. They're still working great. They're still fairly waterproof, but not like they were when they were new. When I originally purchased these, I thought the $100 price tag was steep, but really, this might have been one of the best value purchases I've ever made. I figure they still have a ton more life in them, but when they do die, I'd definitely get another set. The only problem is, they don't make these anymore. But Endura do have a newer version out that I would not hesitate to purchase. And that's 10 products reviewed. Although they may not all be perfect, I'm generally happy with all of them. And if you're interested in any of these, I'll leave some Amazon links down below. But as always, thanks for watching and stay gnarly.